happened, um, which is Monday, September 30th, 2019. Um, what do we have now signed up? I think we have two citizens who signed up this morning to speak. Mr. Larry Pierce and Mr. Peggy Pittman. Mr. Larry Pierce, you signed up first. If you would please come forward, state your name and address. And you know the protocol is stability and also um, respect. And the Board of Commissioners appreciate your comments this morning. Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Working. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Especially the citizens. If you're checking in tomorrow and next day, I'm here for you. <coughs> well, I guess one of the things I'd like to say is that uh, it's sad when something happens in the county. But uh, I guess we all know uh, one of our big fire trucks was on I-20 and a semi-truck driver came on and hit it in the back end. He was from a little bitty town. Don't even know how to say it. H-O-R-E-A. Aurora Path, South Carolina. He was 41 years old. And uh, we can think about that for a minute. But what I'd like to talk to you about today is something that really, really bothered me. And it really ought to bother most of you. And that is, the right to free speech doesn't come up, and I'm not a preacher about the doctrine and all these things that like Mr. John Tomoski likes to come up here about. But I will say this. A couple weeks ago, I made some comments about the parade and the corner was on a horse. Now, Mr. Kelly Robinson didn't really like it. He said I was picking on the ADA. Well, Mr. Robinson, Mr. I have Peterson, a tag. Mr. Peterson, you can't direct anything at our, at our elected body. So I said you can't direct anything to our, to, uh, to our elected body. I was just kind of waiting on you. Remember, I said no personal attacks. To personal our, attack? Yeah, I, I don't okay. know what you're giving to you. Please don't. All right, how about this then? Maybe the attorney will define this. You're not here today. We Maybe have, as an associate. We have, we have uh, attorneys. Tom. Well, there, there's a such thing as rebuttal. Okay. Rebuttal in law is the right of somebody to rebut. So it makes me a rebutter. When somebody says something, they have a right to defend themselves. May I do that? Keep talking. Okay. And, and the reason I say that is because to be under the ADA, which my, that's my tag, I have one. And she has one. And he says he comes under the ADA. All right, maybe, maybe others do too. But you know, I don't think we should hide behind emblems and things. We do what we can do, but I don't think you should ever be criticized, especially somebody that comes up here to talk about things, to try to bring you information like I do. I don't come up here to bring you falsehoods. I don't come up here to do any of that. And it started in the beginning, here in the beginning here, when I brought when I brought this about two years ago about two deputies. Well, that was swept under the carpet by saying, Mr. Kelly said we'll do house cleaning. So you know, you can do house cleaning and you can take up for your fellow brethren, but you should do it in the way that's right. And when somebody says it's not our job to see what they do in their job, you are wrong. You're wrong because you are the commission of the county, you're the head of the county, and we elected everybody here. And so consequently, you should do what is right, not what is, not as what is in your heart, but what's right. And what's in your heart and right is two different things. Mr. So. Mr. Pierce. Yes, ma'am. The buzzer just went off, you're three minutes. You okay, I'll close by saying I saved the county $3,000 a couple months ago by Mr. Axley not going to Las Vegas. Thank you. Thank you. He didn't go. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. We appreciate your contribution to the county government. We'll take this Thank you for allowing me to <coughs> exercise it on there. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Next, we have Ms. Peggy Pittman. Ms. Pittman, please come forward and state your 
uh, address and your subject matter as well as free speech. Uh, yes, um, I'm nervous, so excuse me. My name is Peggy Pittman, and I'm 100 Smallwood Road in Carrollton, Georgia. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say that we, Larry Pierce and me and a bunch of other people, about 15 or 20 of us all meet at Martin's every day. Okay. And uh, we discuss a lot of matters. <coughs> and he brings a lot of forth, a lot of facts. So pay attention to what he's trying to do. And listen to the facts. And, and don't close your eyes on it. Don't close your ears on it. Because mm -hmm. um, he knows what he's doing. And uh, so sometimes we rip at him, you know, different things and argue about different things. But he has a good point of view of things. And we mm -hmm. all, we do come around and eventually see certain ways that he's talking about. So why should the county, you know, uh, lose our money a lot? You know, it's wasted. Mm -hmm. um, so... Listen to what the facts he's trying to tell you. He's doing a good job. He's the only one in Douglas County that's re re really to come up here and speak and voice his words to y'all to tell you the facts that he investigates. So I just wanted to say that he's, he's doing a good job at that. <laughs> I'm a little biased, but he is doing a good job. So please pay attention. Don't close your ears and eyes open. You know, keep them all open and pay attention to it what he proceeds to y'all, you know, because he is telling you the facts. And he wouldn't lie about nothing, you know. And it's nothing against nobody. He just wants to un, uh, not have the money of the county wasted that's not, you know, n unnecessary, you know. And nobody to overspend, you know. So I thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Pittman. I uh, <coughs> certainly appreciate your contribution this morning. Definitely will take this battle and advise you. Ms. Pittman, when you mention your address, you said you were at 100 Smallwood. Is that Carroll, Carroll County? Is yes, that Carroll? Yes, Carroll. We just, we just need it for the record. I want to make sure. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Carroll, Carroll County, Georgia. Okay. I stay a lot down here in Douglas because we might need a lot and visit her and take care of her. No, time. you're welcome to speak. I just want to make sure you have your address. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, any questions from the board or comments? Yeah. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. You know, again, I always appreciate, you know, anybody, and again, I represent District 2, and, and that's important to always delineate. I don't speak on behalf of, of the whole county. And I'm, I'm sensitive to what we have, uh, what they call different segments within um, the population, right? 35,000 strong. <coughs> Everybody will be different, right? We have groups of people, segments of people. We have to recognize who they are. <coughs> but at the end of the day, there's a majority voice that comes forth. So it's never that you don't hear everybody. You hear them. But as the elected official, you make the call on what you think is in the best interest of the whole based on the feedback. Now, I'm going to address, I don't debate citizens um, when I talk to my peers. It's just us having conversations. Um, you know, people may respond, they may lean on every word I, I may mention. That's fine, but I, I talk to my peers because sometimes the rhetoric, it becomes politicized. You can't justify your words and try to say it's black and it's really white. It's like, don't do that. Don't insult the Lord with, with your intentions in your heart and try to get pure and righteous, self-righteousness because we're all, we're, most people in here are old enough, been there, done that. And we know what we're looking at. I, I think to Madam Chair's point, civility is important. You know, make your case and keep it moving. But, but again, right, the First and Second Amendment go hand in hand. But never should we get involved in, in sort of, to my peers, you know, um, if you respond to citizens, I mean, you know, we can always go outside and take it up as you guys know we've done in times past. If somebody needs it, has a need, we'll respond to it. No problem. But with some of the commentary, it, it's just, it, it, it's, it's not the norm. A lot of you guys have been here pre me. This is not the norm. It doesn't make it exceptional. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it a <coughs> deity or a god like this. Oh my god. Like, no. It's over the top. You can't accept, you can't make it the norm by just sitting there and letting it go. Then it becomes the, it's like, no. So it's the tone, it, it's sometimes the words, it's, it's the approach. Sometimes it's, it's all of that will help uh, with conversation. So if you want to get my attention, it, it's a way to approach me. But, but some, but again, people are allowed to do how they want to do it. And so we'll see how, you know, how that work out. If you want to get somebody's attention, there's, there's, there's better ways to doing it than sort of trying to, um, as, as things sometimes play out. 
Citizens are not people to argue with or match wits with. No public employee has ever won an argument with a citizen. <laughs> citizens are people. I'm glad that brought you such joy, Mr. Pierce. <laughs> That's a good one. Citizens are people who bring us their problems. It is our job to handle them in such a way as to be beneficial to them and ourselves. And this is for, particularly for the employees. Your attitude, actions, responsibilities, and relationships shape the citizens' impression of Douglas County government. You provide a vital public relations role, for you are Douglas County government. The county's public standing is determined largely by your actions. Therefore, be friendly, helpful, courteous, and sincere, Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then one additional thing at the posters going up in the departments. Uh, downstairs, you may have seen behind the security desk, there's a retractable poster there um, for safe kids, uh, tips on how to uh, keep our kids safe. And that's considered a retractable poster, a banner. And we're ordering two of those, one to go in the entrance way there so that all the citizens can can see that as they come in to the courthouse. Then we'll also have an additional one that we can move strategically around the courthouse as we need to. Um, as part of our orientation initiative, and I have put together just a little sample because I didn't have a prototype to share with you, but as part of orientation, um, the Human Resources Department will be sharing a folder with all the new hires that has the tenants on it. And then on the inside, it has this little statement here that, that I found on the internet. And it says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. And that was um, quoted by Aristotle. So we're going to share that with the, the new hires and explain to them the importance of customer service. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Better Business Bureau, I think, will send someone out free of charge to conduct classes. You might want to check that out. Excellent. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you're back. You're back. Okay, Vice Chairman Robson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, no, I, I, I appreciate the, the commentary. You know, and, and again, you're, we're, we're in a a new day, so I appreciate dusting off the old files because there were some things that should be embraced from the past, but perhaps they had fallen away um, because it was always inherently obviously here. Somebody created it, so I, I want to acknowledge that. Um, you know, reputational, right? It, it's one thing to believe that you are, and it's another for it to actually be true. So one of the things I'm, I'm looking forward with this initiative is to, to connect uh, the public perception of, of local government in general but Douglas County, right? Can we really deliver on that promise? The sentiment in the broader, you know, the broader region may be Douglas County, well, what we see is this versus what we think we are. And I, I, I believe that Madam Chair, that this initiative is, is gonna help to build that gap um, because obviously you, your, your, your executive administration is the, uh, uh, I won't say the, the first line, I won't say first response, but it's the, it's the first line, it, it represents uh, people downstairs in line, people coming to the courthouse for various reasons. Everything is not about judicial. Sometimes you have business with the government, and um, um, attitude is everything. So I look forward to this. Um, sometimes we can get, um, not that it's bad, but it, sometimes we can get lethargic. Yes. We can get sort of comfortable in that. And, and, and real easily, government can slip into sort of being um, deities. Right? They have authority. You got a thousand people that's controlling a hundred thousand adults. Right, they just sit there and they look comfortable. It's like, well, you got to do what I say. I'm governor. It's what it's real subtle, right? How 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 our employees could easily slip into that because again, you're monopoly. It's easy, just I mean, whether you're at the front desk all the way up to a general, you're that person. And so I'm I'm, I'm hoping that this will at least in Douglas begin to um, uh, begin to transform how we connect with our our citizens, Madam Chair, because they do deserve it. And I think the things that you guys put forth, and I, I hope we can fulfill that. It's just not a poster moment, but we really do it. So I look forward to it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And then it's going to be uh, we will measure our performance as we go forward as well. Fred, I remember we said as we go into this, we'll probably some surveys a little later just to get some customer feedback. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure to measure that. But we want to kick off with this first. Yep. Any other uh, comments, uh, Director uh, HR, and also Donna? Thank you all so much. Thank Any you. Other, thank anything you. else, uh, Commissioners? All right. Thank you all. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We're going to move on to <coughs> our the next presentation that we've all been waiting for, the Douglas County Pavement Evaluation Ladies, and uh, we have our own director, uh, Miguel Valentin, here to kick off. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam <coughs> Chair and Commissioners. Uh, over the last several months, perhaps uh, earlier this year, <coughs> perhaps even late last year, uh, we contracted with Moreland Altabelli to do an assessment of the pavement condition, the last one that had been done by the county uh, in any significant way was in 2005. So it was certainly overdue. And uh, the, the uh, members of uh, Moreland Altabelli have gone out in the field, physically inspected the pavement uh, of all the roads, and they've developed a list uh, with the rating uh, as of last month and um, they have a presentation for us today that we're going to go over and we are in the process of developing the cost of each of those individual uh, treatments that can be applied uh, to the pavements and uh, the uh, overall results are well I'll let I will not steal their thunder but it is quite significant so, Mr. Mike Malcolm of Moreland Al Tovelli will do the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Malcolm. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good morning. As Miguel said, I'm Mike Malcolm uh, with Moreland Al Tovelli uh, <coughs> and uh, worked many years in government. I'm uh, actually a state of Georgia retiree. I uh, worked for the Department of Transportation for over 30 years and have been a consultant uh, for the last 10. Uh, and we want to, we're proud to present uh, our, our findings from the uh, pavement evaluation we've done. Go through a little bit. Uh, this is a, uh, an example. Uh, this is the paver software that we used uh, and how you go through the ratings. Uh, there are like 14 different uh, main categories and I'm going to cover a couple of them, but uh, uh, we look at different areas of, of the payment and uh, go into the, the software that y'all chose, uh, which is Paver. Uh, and uh, some of the main deficiencies we looked at were one that everybody's familiar with, alligator cracking. Uh, there are basically three severity levels of alligator cracking that you look at. Uh, low, which is just starting, medium, where they start forming the little blocks, and then uh, over here, the high, where it gets pretty significant pavement starts popping out. Uh, I'm going to go through this pretty quick. But, uh, block cracking we looked at, which is where the, of course, it looks like they're starting to block around. And then we look at uh, different severity levels. There are actually different severity levels of potholes. That's where the asphalt first starts coming out. Uh, you know, then it becomes what you really see as a pothole, and then when it really becomes tire busting pothole. So. Those. Uh, the way the paver system breaks it down, it uh, not only looks at different types of deficiencies, but we look at the road classification. And basically, uh, here in Douglas County, and I'll go through these pretty quick, but uh, we looked at uh, these basically five different types of roads, and then you have some that are kind of unused. Uh, principles are your main roads, it's like Lee Road and Riverside Parkway, uh, provide this fastest mode of the traffic, uh, you know, get you, uh, you know, this, this is the one step down below an interstate. Uh, they're also sometimes called major arterials. Uh, then we have the arterials or minor arterials, uh, Bright Star Road, Mason Creek are a couple of ones that are identified as arterials. Uh, smaller than the major, but still provide connectivity. Uh, you have collectors, which are kind of, uh, we have Man Road, Phillips Mill Road, a couple of examples. Uh, 
they go through the arterials, uh, what ties the residential roads into the arterials. Uh, you have the industrial roads, uh, Leslie Drive, Sydney, uh, you have several of those here in the county. Um, they're the ones that are primarily used to tie into an industry. Uh, residential, of course, the ones that we're all familiar with are uh, the ones in the, the subdivisions. Uh, usually, you don't want them to be used as through roads. Uh, and uh, so the next thing we looked at is uh, we met with Miguel and uh, the paver program will let you set your own condition categories and we identified condition categories uh, based on what's called a pavement condition index or a PCI uh, each of the roads that we did came up with a PCI and uh, we provided that to Miguel uh, and then what we set was if it was a rated between an 86 and 100, it was an excellent road. Between 71 and 85 was good. 56 to 70 was fair. 41 to 55 was marginal. And 40 and below was poor and very poor. Uh, so, uh, like I said, the, the program will allow you to set those parameters at whatever you want. Uh, and you can name however many. I mean, if you want to do. Uh, multiple different classifications, but this gave you a real good uh, uh, index for, uh, for identifying each of the roads. Uh, we then, I'll just, yeah, I'll go through a few slides here. An excellent road basically has very few deficiencies. You don't find very much wrong with those at all. Uh, good road, you start to see a little bit uh, of cracking in there, but uh, it's still not requiring much. Uh, maintenance, or fair, is you're starting to see some of the alligator cracking, but it's not really popping out where you don't have a lot of potholes and not completely destroyed. Uh, marginal, is getting a little bit worse. You start to see a lot of the block cracking, uh, a lot of the alligator cracking. Uh, and then you get to the poor, very poor. Uh, the next thing, well, and then you got stone, which really, you can't rate the pavement on stone, but uh, in the county, we rated 720 miles of road, uh, 700 paved, and uh, about 20 miles of, of unpaved or stone roads. Uh, we divided it up into commission districts, and uh, this information will be available to you. Uh, this is not real pretty when you get through it, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, we divided it into, Miguel has asked us to divide it up by commission districts. So we have each of the commission districts uh, uh, where it's rated. Uh, and all these ratings, uh, or these numbers that we're presenting today, are actually center line miles, uh, not square yards. Uh, square yards is, is, takes into account the width of the roadway. Uh, so these are center line miles versus uh, square yards. But, uh, so in District 1, you have 132 miles, just a little over. As you can see, 27.76% of them are poor or very poor. Uh, but you also have 22.5% that are excellent. So uh, you see the right there. Uh, this was pretty consistent throughout the county. Uh, I think that's 25% uh, uh, poor, very poor in District 2 uh, with 16%. So they were a little bit more evenly spread out in two. Uh, three is 23% very poor. And District four uh, has the most miles, also has the highest percentage of poor, very poor. With that, we uh, looked at the total county. Uh, the total county is 27.6% uh, of poor, very poor, and almost 21% of of uh, excellent. We also divided it by the principals, the arterials, the collectors, and uh, you can see there that uh, you know where you've you know, the main roads are 30% are in excellent condition, and only 13.5 are in in uh, poor condition. So uh, got a good, pretty good uh, section of roads in uh, the principal category. Uh, and uh, 
house. And then you get over to the residential, and 23% uh, of them are poor or very poor, 20, only 22% excellent. Uh, we basically are completed with the ratings. We presented <coughs> the main information to Miguel. He has the ratings for each of the roadways now. Uh, and then we'll say we divided it up on those. Uh, the software has been ordered for the county. We're buying licenses for the county of the paper software. And then we'll turn the database over to them. I mean, he basically has all the information now, but it'll actually be the database in the paper software. Uh, we've been working with Miguel, as he talked about the cost, to set up uh, the repair, maintenance repair and uh, project identification part of the program, uh, which the program will allow you to do uh, based on the type of PCI and type of practice. And then we'll be providing training for the county staff. That's basically it. Anyway. Yeah, the, 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 thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, again, um, just as a as a, a, a backdrop, this was presented to the Transportation Committee in briefing. I thought it was important to come directly to the full board of commissioners, though, as an acknowledgement without necessarily any action uh, being taken. Um, this is something um, that we talked about uh, probably what, last year, Commissioner. Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. Commissioner Mulcair was still in office. Uh, well, and this is full acknowledgement. We amended our agreement uh, with Orland to allow them to go do this. I think we all agreed 5 0 that this was important. Um, you know, we talked about the, uh, there's been stated roads and revenues. Uh, but yet, you know, even like with Across America, we haven't done a very good job in maintaining. Uh, we haven't. Right? And that was so important. And I appreciate the way you presented, but it's okay. We want it, it to be transparent. Look at it, nothing was maintained. Nothing. Right, so now it's here, and what we didn't get into was obviously it's always important for me. It's like, okay, how much does it going to cost to, make, to, to get this thing up to where it needs to be to get back onto a normal cycle of maintenance? I, I appreciate the commentary about waste and spending, but you, you've got to maintain, and maintain has a cost. <coughs> now, Miguel, I think, and, and Madam Crawford, you helped me with the math. I think you said, what, 700 center miles or something like that? It was like $140 million if we wanted to do all roads. So it's sort of like 140 million. Remember when we had this conversation? Well, remind me. Well, remember? certainly we did. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, we are still tweaking the numbers to make sure that we are including all of the elements that go into each category. But uh, uh, to to do the 700 miles, yeah. well, actually, we would not do much to the excellent category. Oh, so, so to do the remainder of those. It, it's looking like <clears throat> around 200 million, okay. closer to 200 million. Right. That, that's 200 million just to get to par. Right. We, we that by, by, that far behind in strokes, right? And then we got to keep maintaining. Those are two separate conversations, obviously. Um, it, but I, I think it's important. I, I think again, uh, which is why I, I push very hard. You know, taxpayers they want to at least experience their tax dollars on a daily basis. Can we road? Can we ride smoothly on the road? I mean, if I got to grind over to Atlanta to the metro area, where you know 80 percent up roughly go to, to to bring back you know uh, dollars here to take care of our families and so forth, can can, can at least the road be paved? Can you not tear up our car with these potholes and stuff? I mean, I, I get it, but it's not like Douglas County didn't have money. So that, 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 that commentary needs to be like, no, you just had a different set of priorities, right? It could have been balanced off. Right? Again, I, I've got to give you a trade off. Like, okay, so. 200 million, that means that, okay, so if we, I gotta use it, if I open to the jail about 40% out of 100 million, that's 40 million. That means I could probably did all of District 4 during those eight years that the three of us been together, the whole thing could have been paid. You overbuilt the jail, but yet, you know, you didn't do nothing for her roads. Right? And so, Madam Chair, I appreciate that you, you've embraced this and that we, we could come up with some type of funding solution that will actually get us up to par. You, know, you may have to you know, be in a different bucket on how do we maintain it going forward, but I think it, it's worthwhile. And all right, so 40 million, you know, how, how do we fund that? You have us floss, there's other financing options that obviously need to be looked at, but it, it's great to have the report, but unless we take action, then it's just, it was just a nice report for another 15 years. So my last comment now, um, to, to, to Miguel is, um, and this is important. 
for, for the citizens, and I get this all the time, well, when is my road going to get resurfaced in, in that? Will, this, will there be a public portal, or, or to, will we, how will we facilitate that that may allow self-empowerment? I can go out there and put Riverside in and see when it comes up, the next time it comes up. How, how does that work? Or are we, we as commissioners still have to just call you and stuff? How does that work? Well, <clears throat> we have, in fact, um, each of you should have or will have very soon a a uh, uh, report with all the results of the rating. Okay. That report, if it is the, uh, uh, the wisdom of the board, would be posted online for anybody to be able to access. So they can go on there. The one that, uh, that you're going to get is by district. I, I sort of yeah. sense that you probably would hone in on the roads in your particular district. But we can sort it uh, any way. Uh, alphabetical <coughs> is probably the way most people search it from the outside. Right. Mm -hmm. So we will post a ver an alphabetically sorted version of it, and uh, so the public can go on our website and look up the road and find out where it is. That does not answer your question, Commissioner, because um, when the road is going to be done goes to the issue of how much funding are we going to have any given year. And so the process will essentially be uh, the way it's been in the past is one year at a time. We, we develop a list of roads that is gonna, that's going to be either contracted out or done in-house for the next period. So it's either the spring contract or the next year for in-house stuff. Those roads, those lists, once the board them will be posted online. So that is as far ahead as we are able to identify specific roads. Okay, well, let, let, let's clarify. All right, so let's use District 2, right? So there's a listing of roads, and it's going to be this, 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 this schedule, um, whatever it is. Um, hopefully this information can be put online. And simply, it's 1 through 100. Let's take a conversation. 100 roads, 1 to 100, and this is for the, the worst Road to the best road, all the way down, in my opinion. Um, there's one way um, that it can be sorted, which allows, you know, I just say Lee Road, because it's not, but Lee Road was the worst road. <coughs> all the way down the Riverside was the most, you know, for the sake of the conversation. And so for the citizens, they can at least get a relative that says, okay, I'm at the top of the worst roads, and it's all relative. I mean, I, I hear you because you don't want to, um, I and mean, that's something we have to work as our peers. You don't want to commit because you know at the end of the day it is the board of commissioners, and so you don't want to put anything out there. But it's still back to transparency with the citizens. It's still their information. It's still let them see when we can bridge the gap and they're like, okay, we only go do ten miles per year. I'm gonna tell you that I'm not gonna put that in writing, but it's ten miles per district per year. And it's all relative, right? It, it all becomes relative. But to leave them in the dark when their role is gonna come and they get from when you gonna do our role, when you gonna do, I mean. You have the information, why won't you make it public? And, and so for my peers, I, I'm, I'm going to make sure that at least my district is, is public um, so that the citizens can see that. And I appreciate you do your job. We got it. But we, back to your point, I'm sure about interfacing with the public. From a constituent services, we have to do better in making sure that information is available. So as long as you make it available to us, then I'll make sure, at least for my area, that I drive that home. Because I think while I don't want to put the administration in an awkward place, and I'm sure of that, well, y'all committed to this, I think for reference, you know, being that, uh, you know, uh, being a district, we still have to communicate um, and advocate for that. So. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Geiger. Okay. And um, was it the roads that you graded, were they all unincorporated? None of them were in a municipality or anything? We took the uh, database that, uh, that Miguel provided us. Uh, there are some uh, roads that the county maintains that are inside, uh, but m a majority but of them are. There are your responsibility. Your responsibility. They're not, they, you know, like right. Delareca. No, we no city roads. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. So. Um, <coughs> looking at the list, uh, I'm thinking, what priority would you start with? The worst or the least expensive to correct, and move up the list rather than going down the list. <laughs> Well, actually, and can in-house uh, people can we do the the ones that are in fair condition and, and things like that? 
to your earlier point, uh, Commissioner, the recommendation in terms of pavement management at a national level is that you do not focus on the worst roads uh, exclusively, but you actually have a program that has an assortment of the different categories. Mm -hmm. So you may have 20% um, of the worst roads, 20% of the fair or good roads, and the rest in the middle. So that's why it becomes difficult to predict when a particular road is going to be uh, done because we can generate a list of roads uh, for every year and tell you what the funding level that goes with that list of road is. Um, as long as you make the determination that that's how we're going to do them in that sequence, then certainly all, all of that would be set and we would proceed in that fashion. But to your point, um, we would have not necessarily uh, all of the worst roads or all of the best roads would be an assortment of them generally. But the in-house people could uh, attend to some of the fair roads or uh, yes. moderate roads yes. where we would probably have to contract out the worst, the poor. Uh, and um, we might could work from both ends <laughs> and work, work toward the middle, you know. But um, I've always put my roads out there on my website and I, I put it in a newsletter to let people know what we're paving in, in a certain year. And they appreciate that, but then I'll get a phone call, but when are you going to get in my road? And, um, and I, I've said this, every year I've been on the board, I've got two to one road miles to some districts, <coughs> but I only get the same allocation that every other uh, district gets, 20, it's 25%. And where they're going around their roads and, and accomplishing their paving faster, we're always working from behind. And I think we need to take the road, the mileage in each district and do a percentage and divide up the, the LMIG in accordance to that. Uh, because it, um, you know, one district's got more city. The city does, does, does their road. So, and I'm just saying, I would, out of the 20 miles of uh, dirt roads, how many miles was in District 4? No. Majority. <laughs> most of most. Yeah. So, uh, so see, and everybody on a dirt road says they told me when I bought my built my house that they were going to pay this road. I said, well, who is they? <laughs> Your real estate agent, I'm sure. <laughs> but, um, but they they question when are we ever going to get a dirt road paid? We. We are making no progress on that as long as I've been on this board. We have not paid a dirt road. We put millions down, but we do not pay a dirt road. And uh, so we have, you know, I have that to contend with. And so this needs to be really thought out and, and uh, you know, bring everything to the table because I, I just don't think what we're doing is working. Uh, more uh, we've got three more years on the splash, and then all the funds are going to run out. So we, we need to be making some plans and, and have a vision as to where we're going to go with all this. So mm -hmm. with that, I'll go back. Commissioner okay. okay. uh, As my colleague just stated, fellow, that that may be some concerns based on what you guys just stated when you got all the dirt roads, but like my district, you know, 80% in the city. And as I think I heard, you guys didn't cover the city. No city roads were, were covered, but you did cover the roads that we picked up on the SDS. Correct. Like Chicago, Hospital Drive, and so on. You did cover those. Yes. Yeah. So I guess when we started doing these percentages, so if you're trying to be what we call fair, because mm -hmm. I, I know we're going to harp on to that because I work closely with the city and, and making those kind of adjustments. 
if we're going to look at the dirt roads and allocate that or separate that out as to roads that are being paved, then we can also do the same with the city roads because if that's the case, for what's being allocated using the number of 25%, maybe because of the small amount <coughs> that's covered, the 80% co covered by the city, I'll get a larger amount based on the effect of having the least amount of roads coverage within the city, as she stated about the dirt roads in District 4. So much for that. Um, 200 meals that you spoke of about that will bring us up to par, correct? Correct. Roughly, that's a rough number. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about a possible funding source, or we, I guess, will talk about a possible funding source. Am yes. I correct? Help me out with that. I'll yeah, the, the funding source, certainly, uh, what I was alluding to is not a, a separate funding source, but that the program hinges on, the delivery of the program hinges on there being an allocation of funds mm -hmm. sustained for a sustained period of time. Mm -hmm. So that is a discussion really for the board mm -hmm. as to whether it would be strictly the allocation that we've been using in the past, certain mm -hmm. amount, certain percentage from SPLOST mm -hmm. and the LMID program, mm -hmm. uh, or is there going to be additional funds that can be allocated? But that is a discussion for the board. Got it. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Okay. So, um, what else? And you did talk to me about the breakout of the, because I was looking at the city of Villarica, Douglas Field, and small portions of, of roads that are outside of that. And Okay. But like you, you covered my, my other ones doing the SES and all that good stuff. So, okay. I'll, I'll go back with that thing. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Any other comments from the board? All right. Yeah. Um, um, Vice Chairman Rockson. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm you want to say? Well, oh, I, okay. I, I will say um, to the point that we have, what is it? It seems like each one of us has a good percentage except for District 4. She has twice the roads, of course. But we get LMIG funding, correct? Correct. To do the roads that we have. Do. Those are based on what rate? Do just based on what we as district commissioners feel is, is the, the most. That in the, the most in the past we we would have had a list of roads that we would have either received complaints on, mm -hmm. and we would have gone out and confirmed that the condition warranted some work, uh, or based on the funding, we would have looked at the old rating the 2005 PCI ratings and pooled roads from there. Part of the, uh, the issue with the program is that when you are doing work in a particular subdivision, often you have to reach beyond what you normally would do. So if you do it based on <coughs> PCI, let's, I'll give you an example. Let's say there's a, a subdivision with 10 roads and Five of those roads have a PCI of 60, so certainly warrants doing something. And some of the others are at 75. Well, part of the consideration is if you're going to have a contractor working on five of 10 roads and there's a couple others, three or four others perhaps, that you wouldn't normally do, but because you're going to be there, they're they get included in, on the list. We get the complaint pretty, pretty regularly. In fact, I saw an email this morning, um, somebody uh, alluding to this issue. You came into my subdivision, you did several rows that needed work, you didn't do this one. And this one is the worst. Of course, it wasn't the worst before. We did the worst once. Now, what remains, that one is the worst. So we get into that issue. So a pavement management program takes into account a lot of factors. Certainly, how much funding is dedicated for the project. That's one. How many miles is that going to yield? And then if there's a division by district, in whatever fashion, in the county, it's been 25% for each of the four commissioners. But that number can change. If you ha all have a discussion and uh, you agree to change it to some other uh, percentage, then 
we will follow that new percentage that's established. We've been following the consensus of the board from years past. Mm -hmm. uh, so we take all of those factors into account. Now with the new pavement management program, we are able to <coughs> input a, up, a, an upper figure budget, essentially, for the project, and it will generate a list of what the target roads are for that amount. So that is not necessarily going to be the same set of roads that residents have complained about or that you have heard about. Uh, certainly there's always going to be a difference of opinion as to how bad a road is based on whether you're doing that person's road or the one across the way. So you're always going to run into that, but the program will generate sort of a universe of roads. If you tell it you have a $4 million project, then it will select, based on the criteria that we have developed, it's called a decision tree, it will select, let's say that we were going to do 20% bad roads, 20% good roads, and 20% of all the other categories, so five categories. If that were the decision tree, then it would generate a list of here are the candidate roads that meet that criteria. And that would be the list that we would start out with. Certainly there's going to be other roads that um, are candidates as well. And we may, the board may decide that, okay, I was going to have, uh, based on the list, these roads. There is another road that is a higher priority for a variety of reasons. We would rather do that one. There's discretion as to that. But essentially, we'll, uh, because of the cost implications, it, it's almost like you would have to trade it, uh, trade a new road for one that's there of the same length, more or less. But uh, we do have some discretion as to that. There's always the possibility that if, if there is a new priority or something that the county wants to focus, an area that the county wants to focus on, uh, if there is an opportunity for economic development that you want to further uh, development uh, road improvements in a certain area, you can certainly do that uh, in lieu of the list that's generated by the rating program. But it, it does take all of the factors that normally would be uh, the decision points for an engineer and it, it does it automatically because it, it's got the parameters to, to search by. It's pretty neat. One of the things I did notice is that our residential streets are kind of on the back burner and our arterial roads and the ones that we use the most seem to get the most attention. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we want to even that out. So it seems as though the software you're saying will be able to do that because it will take into consideration all we certainly have the, the opportunity to do that. One, one of the things, um, not to argue your point, it's a very valid point. One of the reasons why generally there tends to be a, more attention on the, on the collector and arterial roads are because they are viaducts. They, they, not only do they carry more volume, but they also expose the county to more people and they present a different image depending on their condition. Mm -hmm. I was there. I was just trying to get an understanding. Thank you. Okay. 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 This is this is a very very important topic. I mean, we show up every two weeks and stuff, but this is one that's worthwhile. The, the conversation, uh, it, it's something uh, to Miguel. Um, excellent presentation, excellent. Um, it's important because it, it's there's a cost with this, right? Um, there's a when we, we started a couple of years ago, and Commissioner Mister Commissioner Powell, you were involved, but we had the capital transportation fund. And we had to commit to it and put money aside. This was during the recession. We had to put money to aside to be able to address either 
things that were in, unanticipated or just normal maintenance. It's just, it is what it was. We did just a little while. We did that. Right? But, but we recognize that we, we just, we, we, you know, you have, you just, okay, I'm not going to pay attention to it much. And again, like America, this thing has deteriorated. You know, so the, the greatest country in the world is like this 100 year run as a world power, our infrastructure has crumbled. And we haven't addressed it. We're playing politics with money. So this is related. So I'm standing there, I'm talking to Senator Eisen, I'm talking to Congressman Scott in our town, we were up there recently. And I bring up, I bring up this point about infrastructure. And my point is that we're gonna do what we need to do at the local level, but I'd love to be able to leverage our capital dollars. I know that they're, they're, they're it's not that many. I know everything is competitive, but if we got our act together and we're shovel ready, um, I, I'd really like to have some type of favor. That's sort of how I left. In other words, like I, I, you gotta do what you gotta do. I get it. Likewise here, we have to agree that this is political. Are we gonna put our mouths behind this? Do y'all know how much this is about to cost? This is 40 million off the clip. How you gonna fund this? Right, it's gonna be a splash, but y'all gonna we do it, you know, free, we got money in the books for the spots currently. We didn't bond everything. How are you going to pay for this? How are you going to maintain the normal LMIG match that we're required to? So I'm looking forward to, to um, our, I guess, our budget process where I, I got to hear this story. How are y'all going to do this? Don't set expectations of the public and say, well, we're going to get our roles and we're just going through these motions. I've seen it in times past. Not now. In times past, we do these really neat things and we wiggle it, but yet we don't you don't have to get behind this, right? This, this, this is straight where the heart of the people is. It's like my roads. When I pull out my garage, I pull out wherever I pull onto that road, I want to experience my tax dollars. I get y'all spend money any other place, but can I get my road smooth? And I just want to see how strong we're going to be as a board to, to deal with this because it hasn't been taken care of. Now, I, I, I get the percentages. I'm not going to get it. That's, that's, that, that's, you know, it's based on people, not road miles, right? It's, it's people have votes, so we're all equal. And so. Um, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. I wouldn't compromise, um, you know, by land. Land doesn't drive um, appropriations. People do. Um, and obviously the census will, will show us that pretty here soon. That, that being said, I'd like to, um, Madam Chair, I don't know what your intentions are um, by way of, uh, but will we have, um, and, and again, there has not been any instruction from finance per se to tackle this publicly. There may be some, some exercise and stuff, but can we anticipate some type of funding recommendation toward this, I mean, even if it's just relative to something else to talk about, not to commit to. Do we anticipate that anytime soon? Certainly that we can entertain that discussion. But, um, and that probably be uh, right along the budget time, budgetary period, and we just, again, we will be transparent regarding the dollars. It's very obvious that we are 40 years behind, and I made that very clear when I was uh, campaigning in 2016. These roads have not been done, but I would, would like to commend our new, uh, new transportation uh, director for the enormous amount of work that you've done this year. I have noticed roads just everywhere you go to paper, but I know we're still behind. And this report is just a moment for us to recalibrate, put us in a position so we can now prioritize accordingly so we know where it has to go. Uh, I, I want to make it very clear to the citizens of Douglas County, it, it's been 40 years and we're trying to catch up on 40 years, so we won't be able to do it tomorrow, but we do now have a roadmap to success before we were just all over the place floundering. And we have added new roads since 2005, I believe. So, so we, our list has been refreshed. Um, again, that may be an opportunity for <coughs> such as the key spots. It may be an opportunity for you, uh, Miguel, if you would. Uh, the LMIG, um, I'm not sure if the state would engage in conversations with us if you show this report and show how far behind the county is in terms of roads and being paid. If they could, Ending up their amount that they provide yearly, and then if we match it, is, is, is that an opportunity? Madam no. Chair, unfortunately, their their funding is allocated by formula, by formula. and it's uh, based on population and center line miles. So okay. um, yeah, that's not that's not, an option. not an option. Okay, I was just trying to be creative. I didn't know if they would just change the formula for us a little bit because of the conditions of some of the roads. Okay, okay. Well. Um, we're plugging right along, and uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Guy, I believe you had something. Have you finished, Commissioner? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma um, Miguel, I have noticed where the county line and the city line meet. Oftentimes, the city doesn't finish that road out, 
and it just may be a few hundred feet. Do y'all coordinate anything with the city uh, we, the we do. intersection that comes to my mind is Chapel Hill Road, Stuart Mill Road. At Chapel Hill Road, there's a section where the county uh, or the city uh, boundary comes <coughs> through there that needs paving so badly. <laughs> but uh, and that that happens on several places where there's just a few hundred feet that's in the city. Do you coordinate with them at we do. all? We do, and, and uh, not only with cities, but counties as well. And the issue tends to be one of timing. We, we're generally uh, well ahead of them in terms of delivering that project and, and having a contract ready. Uh, but we certainly do reach out to the city whenever we have a joint jurisdiction road uh, and other counties as well. And if they're able to uh, either have, enter into a memorandum of understanding uh, agreement with the, with us and they're wanting us to include that road we certainly would consider that and bring it to the board for uh, for inclusion in the contract but mm -hmm. but uh, to, to answer your question commissioners we do we do coordinate and uh, communicate with them and to address the white elephant in the room about the funding and everything uh, probably the best bet would put out a bond and let the people vote whether or not they will fund it <laughs> have a bond uh, just for roads, dedicated to roads. But of course, we've got the splash going on, so we may not can do that until after the splash is over, because uh, people, some people aren't happy with <laughs> the way that those dollars have been spent. But I do disagree with my fellow commissioner about it should be divided by people, because the people in Douglas County does not know where District 4 and District 3 the lines start, and they may be going across several. They may be cutting through Lee Road. People from my end of the county may be cutting down Lee Road to get to the interstate. So it's the roads of the county. It, it should not go by the people. It should go by area. That, that's my opinion. But um, uh, and everybody. <coughs> I don't care where the pothole is, we all get blamed for it. Mm -hmm. We all get blamed for it. We're the government. And so we need to look at it in, in an area um, aspect to it. So, But I just wondered if you did coordinate with the city because um, there are several places I, I've noticed that we paid and then all of a sudden the city has not paid. Kudos to the city for Douglas Boulevard. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's been the worst one. I used to get blamed for that because it's in my district, but it's in the city, so it's not our responsibility. So I would put it out in my newsletter and everything. But it, it's really nice. Do you know, are they going to go all the way to Chapel Hill, or are they ending at Highway 5? I, I do not know. You know? No, I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I've been asked that, so, but... I, Kudos to them for that nice new pavement. <laughs> and with that, I go back. <laughs> just Mitchell, me do you Yeah, just, just one more. So I know we always have these conversations, though they sound pretty and they look pretty on paper and all this other good stuff. But mm -hmm. as my colleague stated, the, the source of funding is going to be the biggest key. We can always have these conversations, but this has been ongoing for I don't know how many years. And when we what I call get shovel ready, you'll have the funding in place and we're ready to go, then we can kind of move. But without that, we're just gonna have these conversations that's gonna look real pretty and sound really great about what we want to, could do, how we could do it, all this other good stuff. So let's have a heart to heart conversation in this, this, this board about a funding, a true funding source, whether it's a geo bond or whatever that is, and commit to it and get ahead of this 40 year run which is not true what I call 40 year run. We've con we've done roads. It's just that we're behind and where we are with the roads. So that's not, I don't want to scare everybody to think that we're, we're 40 years behind, but we're just, we're always playing catch up because we don't allocate enough funding to actually keep up with, I mean, things that happen. Uh, but my other question to this though is this, the, the software that you, have, you guys have, that you guys are using, because it sounds to me, it sounds great. Great piece of software, but are we going to do another drive around 
a year or two or five years from now to say now this road that was <coughs> poor is now you know off the Richter scale that needs to be done because we don't know the traffic we don't know the count of what that is it'll just or we're going to play by ear or with the software automatically update to a degree of saying potentially this road that was okay should be now poor because it's five years later or six months later. I don't know, does it work like that or how? It, it, it does. Oh, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. so, it, it, it offers a prediction um, based on the number of years how, how what the PCI degradation probably okay. ought to be. And, what, and, you know, on year one, certainly they've looked at the condition and it ought to be fairly close. Okay. It, it ought to be actually dead on on year one. But as the years progress, you're absolutely correct. Conditions change, the weather, more yes. rain, all of the factors that deteriorate pavement will, will have an effect. And it is incumbent upon us to go out and actually rewrite those roads. So if we had a, a bad ice storm in the next year, because that's one of those uh, adjustments that we need to make, is it automatic you plug in and say, hey, there's an ice storm that came through this year, so this road went from here to here just based on that ice storm, or you just feel it just based on, generically it should be at this point five years later. Even though it may or may not be, it still could be an excellent road because of just the, the traffic count that it got. I mean, I don't know, I'm just yeah, curious. Yeah, you, you would have to actually physically go and re-rate the road. So is that what's gonna happen? Because that's what I'm alluding to. I'm trying to figure out how, how, how good of the information that we're gonna have because I don't see none of this happening uh, in a five year span. I really don't. I, I just I, I think we'll we'll still be paying catch up, but I don't think we'll be two hundred million dollars to the good. I just don't see that. Being realistic. So it sounds great, but we we probably gonna bite this apple in smaller bites, which it only makes sense. Uh, and uh, try to deliver what we can annually or this board commits to a true commitment of whatever that number is, you know, because we got to look at matches because I, I, I'm, I'm like uh, Vice Chair Robinson. I mean, I want to get my federal dollars and then I want to get that the state dollars and so on. But we still got to have some form of matching funds to be realistic about it versus we have this conversation again because since I've been here, we've had this conversation. Now I'm glad we at least got a tool in place now to at least get a good look of where things are outside of, okay, what roads do you guys see that you want on your list? And the only thing we go by is based on the calls we get, based on the potholes we've seen, and the ones that tore up our car, and so on and so forth, and say, hey, we need to put this road on there. Not realizing that that's really not the one that needs to go on there. It's the one across the street or on the other side of town that needs to go on there. Because it only makes sense even too, though, let's say if one district needed the most, just from the effect of how poor that road or those roads really are. Do we shift that to that one district? Or do we say, well, you know, we've got to allocate a 25% amongst the board because that's kind of what we are and we want to be fair across the board. I mean, I don't know. I'm just I'm just asking. I'm just making a statement, so not to say you gotta comment, but <laughs> yeah, 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 just out there. So I, I just we this this conversation has been ongoing for years before your time and any of you guys even put this all together. It's this board commitment is going to be the true, you know, uh, essence of what this really is because we can say this, we'll, we'll have this conversation again while, while I'm gone. And I'll be in my walker saying, you know, we, we, we <laughs> read the, we put this road on the list and it was coming and, and you know, and it still got the deepest potholes that there, oh, but here no that. I'll leave it at that. So I, I'm hoping that uh, my colleague and the transportation committee that they come up with some real good recommendations that we all can live with and look at the true numbers and the true essence of what we really got to be dealing with versus this ongoing conversation about the main focus is going to be how we're going to find the funding source for this. Because right now, I don't see nowhere in our budget, at least from what I've read, that we've got $200 million to just lay it on the line and let's get all these roads fixed. So, you know, smaller bites, I think we'll get there. But we'll never, we'll always be behind. That's my, that's just my now. I knew that. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. We've made one step forward with just the report to, to identify, and this, gives a, this provides an opportunity for us to at least have the roadmap.
I agree with uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, it's a lot of money. We, we need to think of a, a way to get there. And I'm quite sure um, we'll take this back up in the Transportation Committee. And I know Vice Chairman Robson leads that committee. So we'll try to be creative, bring it to the board, and it's something that we may have to appeal to the voters for. Uh, and if they realize how bad these roads are, they will be maybe willing to help us uh, get there. Thank you so much uh, for the presentation. And thank you so much, um, Miguel Valentino. Oh, I had a brain from him there for a second. All right, Board of Commissioners, we have approval of minutes tomorrow, so please be prepared to approve the minutes accordingly. Uh, we have four proclamations tomorrow, so please be prepared to uh, listen to the proclamations. We have one regarding the American Business Women's Day. We have uh, one proclamation uh, about Retired Educators Day, um, another one about National Community Planning Month, and the last but not least is Fire Prevention Week uh, in Douglas County. So be prepared tomorrow for those proclamations. Also, Board of Commissioners, we have two record uh, resolutions, which are tab number eight and nine tomorrow. It's an approval of a resolution in support of an application for federal funds through the Atlanta Region Commission for various transportation projects. Uh, and just be prepared uh, to adopt. And then tab number nine, approval of resolution adopting the 2019 Title uh, VI program plan. And that will be, again, led by our own um, Miguel Valentin. I believe, Commissioner Carthen, you have a question. You got a question? I do. So, uh, Director Valentin? Yes, ma'am. Can you just quickly tell us about the resolution mm -hmm. for Title VI? Yes. Uh, one of the requirements for the county to remain uh, certified mm -hmm. to handle federal funds is you, you have to have a Title VI program. And Title VI program is something that the county routinely uh, complies with and, and is embedded into the operations of the county. However, we now have to have a report that actually gets turned over to GDOT on a, on a periodic basis, annually, sometimes every couple of years. And uh, the county was certified to uh, handle federal funds back in 27, tw late 2016 into early 2017. And uh, we are coming up on having to be recertified again to be able to continue to manage those projects. So uh, the Title VI uh, plan is essentially codifying, well, no, that's a legal term, let me not use that term. It is essentially uh, putting together a narrative uh, saying how the county meets the, the Title VI requirements of, of the federal law. And uh, it has to be adopted by the board, and a report has to be put <coughs> together periodically. And in discussions uh, with uh, the HR director, uh, Mr. Perry, uh, a lot of the, uh, he's been designated by this ordinance uh, as the actual person responsible to make sure that it's being carried out. Um, certainly he's got a wealth of expertise along those lines and maybe that's why he was tagged with it. But it is really the burden of the entire uh, organization. And so this particular program speaks to the transportation department's elements as well as the county in general. Uh, and it is, as I mentioned, required in order for us to remain, uh, or at least to apply to be recertified, and my expectation is that we would be. So this has to do with contracts that the uh, Department of Transportation undertakes as we get federal funds from the government. There are certain criteria that we have to meet in order to that, put those dollars down. That is correct. And, and we have to um, submit um, certain reports to them. And one of them deals with our efforts or uh, experience with the Title VI elements, whether there have been complaints, uh, things like that, how they have been handled. Do we have a procedure in place to handle all of those? And that's what this plan is about. Uh, just essentially a narrative of how we will go about ensuring that, that the county is in compliance. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I am um, starting to understand as a commissioner is reporting. 
how do we report minority contractors? How do we report those individuals coming to the county to do business with the county? Because federally, a lot of the money that we receive is because we are open to doing business that way. And that we must report it and track it. That so is my correct. question is, how are we actually going to track that? Well, one of the things that we do, one of the requirements for transportation are any projects that have federal funds, we are certainly subject to audit, and, and we are audited periodically, frankly, more often than I would think necessary, but we are. And as long as we keep good records, it's just a matter of you know, producing them and, and just letting them know what we've been doing. Um, in order for us to be able to bid out federal projects, we have to have certain verbiage within the document itself that stipulates uh, that it is in compliance with Title VI of the federal code. <coughs> in transportation, we put together those documents before they go out to bid. So we make sure that those things are in there. So our report, whether it be annual, biannual, uh, will indicate we have handled during the last reporting period project number so-and-so, uh, however many projects we have handled, and we have ensured that this requirement was met, that requirement was met, and that's what the report will show. And that is a report that, as it relates to the transportation activities, we would provide the information to the, to the HR director who is uh, then going to compile that. There, there are requirements related to financing uh, the, and purchasing as well. And um, so there is a role to be played by uh, HR, by transportation, by finance and purchasing in developing or providing the information that would go into this report that would then be submitted to GDOT. That was my question. Thank you so much for explaining that. I do not think that was Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carter. Commissioner Carter, can we go back up to number eight and it says, uh, it's a resolution in support of application of federal funds through ARC for various transportation projects. Do you not <coughs> list the various projects? I do, and in fact, um, uh, the, the uh, projects are embedded within the resolution, so um, as part of your... Could you, could you tell us what projects they are? Sure, sure. We had, uh, let me give you a little background on that because uh, the Atlanta Regional Commission has opened up the window of uh, opportunity to apply for federal funding for transportation projects. But of course, it's all competitive, all the counties in, in the region and, and cities and CIDs can apply. Um, the, the projects that have the greatest chance of actually being awarded some funds are those that are already in the system, projects that are already receiving federal funds. And so of the, of the projects that we have that were adopted and we have underway, those were the projects that um, the list that I presented and we discussed at the Transportation Committee. Uh, there is a local match required of 20 percent, uh, at least 20 percent, often it ends up being a little more than that, perhaps much more than that. But it became a discussion at the Transportation Committee in terms of the ability of the county to, uh, to commit to the 20% match. So the issue becomes if we are asking for say 25 million or 30 million dollars potentially of federal funding, if they should award all of that and we have to have 20% of that match. Which is $5 million. Which would be $5 million. Now, six. not all five of that. Six, to be exact. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, we, we have to match 20% because of that TIA. That, um, the 20% is for, for the types of projects that they are opening uh, the, the call for projects for. <laughs> It is the federal requirement. They will only, the maximum that they will participate is at 80%, so the remainder has to be by the sponsor. 
and uh, Commissioner Robinson uh, referred to our capital transportation fund uh, earlier, but uh, a lot of the depletion of that account has been because of all the various projects we've got going ongoing right now. We, and, and people don't realize that when we get a grant, we have to put local match to it. And 20% is kind of steep, but we used to do 10%, didn't we? And then it moved up to 20% yeah. after the, we did not pass that. I, I think you're thinking of the LMIG program. It used to be a 10% local match for LMIG, and because of the TIA, that yeah. act, that, right. that was not passed in the region, it went to 30%. So we have to match at level. Do you think the, the state will ever come off of that? Because it's like mm -hmm. they punished us, us for not voting for that, uh, that tax. They viewed it at the time as an incentive to vote for it. So well, there, was, there wasn't relative. too many areas that really voted for that, but they're, they're punishing all the others because it's like they tried to take our voice away from us. They say, you, you get to vote, but if you don't vote this way, then we're going to take this uh, more money from you mm -hmm. on matching grants, and that, that doesn't seem... Has anybody even talked to the legislators about this, uh, coming off of this? My guess and I don't know personally that, that they have or not, but my guess that there have been a lot of people who have talked to them about it. Uh, not everybody is, was happy, not too many people were happy with that. So you're not alone in that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a lot of money with uh, the LMIG program. It's, um, how many million is it each year? About, how many? The LMIG? Uh -huh. Like one, 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 two, something And then there. we have to, Put eight hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Half, half imagine, a million. Which is, um, <coughs> it, it seems like they're they're fighting against the local people. So uh, anyway, maybe we can bring that up. In our legislative party meeting that's coming up in November, would it be something we can discuss with our legislature? Would it be the state people or would it be the federal? Would it be state? Or that would be state. For state. LMIG it would be the state. Yeah. The match. But you said it was a, a federal law. Well, there's two different two different programs. Oh, okay. The one that that uh, the subject ARC. of the yeah the subject of the resolution today those are federal. Okay. So the okay. federal okay. ratio is and that's twenty percent is locked in. Locked in. And then the other one. The LMIG is thirty. The TIA uh, vote. Or okay. Correct. All right, I give that. Yes, I, it, um, no, no, I'll be quick. No, but, but to that point, one more time, it's a con it, but it's worthwhile in this conversation because, again, we're the Madam Chair, we're going into the budget cycle. But and, and, and as you said, the elephants in the room, um, government costs, right? So there's, there's always going to be a contradiction with public opinion, like, okay, you know, this is going to cost. I mean, it, it, this ain't hard, this is straight math. The question comes, okay, guys, listen to Madam Guy's point, like, are y'all paying attention? It's like, okay, we get the call, we got to put this funding up, like, oh my God, and that's what happens. If you don't plan for it, you're going to react to it in the moment. Mm -hmm. That throws up everything else. We're just, you're just reprioritizing. We get to do it. I mean, okay, we, we, we are the pleasure of the board. I get it. But I, I'd like to encourage us to do a little bit better long-term capital planning. A little, little bit like we've got this policy in place, but yet where are we putting the, the, the funding plan? And it's not that it's not, they're not talking about it. But I'm saying, okay, guys. We got a window of time here to get this right. We got a chance to reset right now, right? And um, again, I only ask that we do the best we can based on whatever you guys' position is. But let's not kick the can. Let's not be about the feds. Like, no, I don't, I don't have time for the state. I got to deal with local. Take it up to the state, you guys. The citizens upset. Take it to take it to your state reps and your state senators. <coughs> put pressure on them. But right now, I'm at a local. It's the local bird. Like I've got commercial businesses that are just likewise. Like okay, these roads are bad on my trucks. They're turning over. Right? I get that the, the public gets to vote, but I do pay taxes too. I need this density to be taken care of. So I get it, but I just ask that we, we really commit to this. And I'm sure I just hope we can have a, a very mature conversation about committing to this. I think the citizens will agree. We just need to come up with a plan to be able to deal with this because it's not going to go away. And again, I just don't want us to get caught off guard. It's like, okay, follow that cash flow. 
All right, come around that corner again. Well, one time, you know, I, I'm like, pay attention, guys. Um, and you guys are warning. Y'all are saying, y'all sending up signals, we are. So really, Madam Chair, it's really on the board to come behind the administration to get what's needed. So okay. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Director Valentin. We're going to move on to our business items. Tab number 10 is consideration of proposed merit system changes as recommended by the Personnel Review Board regarding sections 13-8, same compensation, 13-9G, Personnel Review Board, 13-17A, positions covered, 13-42, salary reviews, 13-124D, vacation leave, and 13 Dash one twenty two holidays. Uh, Director Perry. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, we have had I've had some several conversations with uh, the commissioners individually as well as uh, collectively with uh, Eddie Daniel from the Personnel Review Board. We've gone through the changes, and uh, with the exception of uh, uh, number three, all the other changes are fairly uh, housekeeping items, and we we so. In short, I would like to propose to the board that we move forward with all of the other changes, but that the board deny the uh, proposed change number three, uh, which uh, talks about eliminating completely the, um, uh, the policy that the personnel review board shall have no authority to review or, or make recommendations regarding employee salaries or the pay plan outlined in division three I uh, uh, request that, that uh, the board deny that and uh, give us some opportunity to uh, uh, to reword that, to look at that uh, uh, proposed change and reintroduce it again uh, in 2020 after the February uh, Merit System meeting. Okay. Uh, any questions for the board? Vice Yeah, this one was, you know, again, I'm, I'm usually not involved in these particular committees or so forth, so this every now and then I'll weigh in. And so it, th this one was like, okay, so it was no authority. And uh, it, it, in my mind, um, they're asking for, they want that taken out, correct? Let's clarify. Yeah. Yes, sir. No authority. It, it, you know, it's, it's the challenge between the executive and support. It's like district commissioners and, and madam chair, right? It, it's how much weight. How do we distribute this? Like, okay, so he's the chief executive of HR, so you got this personnel review board. And I'm, I'm looking at personnel review board is made up of the different district areas within the government, right? And they're coming together to make recommendations, but it's, it's, it, and it's just a check and balance. And it's something that historically has, has been there to, to supplement um, and, and protect uh, to a certain extent that you don't concentrate too much power in one area uh, with one, one person, but yet, I always think, but you got the board of commissioners at the end of the day. So um, I'm not certain, like, well, if it's worked so far up until this point, where are we changing that language? Just that part right here. Now, I'm okay with wordsmithing. I'm okay with it. I'm not, I'm let you guys wordsmith. But I, I'm listening to, it, it, it's usually about power, right? It's usually about who, go, who gets to say what, and, and it's like, well, and again, for the most part, our HR is pretty decentralized in certain functions, the way it operates and, and centralized in sort of administration. Of course, you've got these various areas with di different chiefs and generals and, and, and different directors, as I call them. And so they, they pretty much run their own area. And that's why you have this review board. It's supposed to be supplement. So I, I, I get it. I'm like, okay, but what's motivating this change? Now, now I was in a meeting. I was being briefed, but it's like, what are y'all not saying? What's the issue here? Why did this come up that somebody sees something that when you usually when legislation shifts, that means somebody has brought something to somebody's attention that we need to uh, enable something or prohibit something. And I, I'm, I'm putting it out here because obviously this is important. This, this requires our vote. So it's like, huh. I, and I, I told these guys I would just take it up later with my peers in, in a debate. Because I'm, I'm curious to listen to what you guys have to say. What, 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 why? So anyway, how do you Oh, Madam Chair, I would like uh, Mr. to... Mr. Daniels, so if you could just come forward and, and just comment on uh, Commissioner Robinson's question regarding why this changed. I'll try to give a, a good answer on that or an understandable answer. Uh, like we stated earlier, this has not been a real conflict yet, but it's just like in these proposal changes that we're looking at today. When you read this thing, it's in my opinion, direct conflict with our duties as personnel review board 
in section E, part one, second sentence. That says that we will, uh, these rules and regulations shall include provisions for the establishment and maintenance of job classifications and compensation plans. The conduct of the examinations for appointment under the merit system. Okay, that's promotional. Now, it says very clearly here in part G, the Personnel Review Board shall have no authority to review or make recommendations regarding employee salaries or pay plans outlined in Division Three. In these proposals that we're presenting to you that came through our February meeting, uh, I was just sitting here reviewing over this. The very first one deals with compensation. It's doing away with compensation, but it deals with compensation. This part G says we can't even look at this, but yet we always have. Nobody said, hey, you can't do that, but this will save the county money, but this part G says we couldn't do that. And then the uh, uh, fifth item, and it may, be, may not be fifth on y'all's list, I'm not sure, this is fifth on the way we propose it. It's uh, section 13-42, salary reviews. Under the guidelines of this, if you take it to the letter, we can't address that either. So it's just, uh, it's conflicting. And if y'all ever called our hand and said, hey, you can't discuss that, well, in our duties, it says right here full well that that's one of our duties. So I was looking for clarification and, and Mr. Perry and I are, we're in agreement to pull this so there can be some uh, better wording, if you will, for next year instead of going on with it today because he and I are still totally in disagreement, but we've agreed that let's move forward with the rest of these things because some of it is stuff that didn't get done last year that needs to be in our merit book. So uh, we agreed a little bit ago to remove this one, work on the verbiage, and then bring it back in the February meeting. Did, does that help, Mr. Robinson? Yeah, yeah I mean, and you're doing it. Again, I, I, I trust my, my peers will weigh in because this is about who has the greater say, the executive or the board. Well, and, and it, in clarification on that, Mr. Commissioner, right on down in this paragraph, it says that we as personnel review board recommend. Okay. It says that the board of commissioners may accept or reject <coughs> any part or all of proposed amendments as submitted. So anything we send through Mr. Perry, the board of commissioners has final say. We only recommend. Well, well, this is my point. Now, when we, we had our briefing, you know, I, I was aware of this, and I, I right. just wanted to bring it back up with my peers. It's not like a revelation in this moment, but it, I, when I heard it, it's like, okay, I'll deal with that later. Because, but, but again, it is, and I, I think it's just giving assurance to our HR director that says, no, you're the executive. There's a process. I understand how sometimes this works, where I mean, it's, it's who are you leaning to? It's like, well, you're making a recommendation to the HR director as a supplement as he comes before us because he's working obviously with Mark and Madam Chair on ultimately all of this stuff, right? And, and so I, it's one of those where, mm -hmm, I, I, and I, I still come back to it, it's just the language um, going from no authority to some relative something. It just needs to be clarified, but um, like I said, there is no conflict so far. And, um, and, and sometimes conflict is necessary per se, uh, because you do have disagreement. That's right. fine, that's acceptable. But the fact is, is that when you structurally try to change something that gives you power, it's like, okay, let's look at this. Um, I'm okay though, I'm sure. I, I, I appreciate the fact y'all gonna pull it. I think I mean, our, we have a term, we do have legal representation, <coughs> but I, I just wanna get the language right now, Chair, now, mm -hmm. but I can go either way, I'm sorry. Okay. 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 All right, thank you so much, Mr. Daniels, for clarifying. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Perry, so we, we're going to pull that one that we just discussed, and then the others will come for the Board of Commissioners. So, Clerk, we have that, so we can just have those adjustments in the tomorrow without trying to pull that one. Okay, we'll move on to tab number, tab number 11, authorization to accept the 2019 ACCG Group Health Benefits Program Health Promotion Grant for the amount of $6,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Madam Chair, this is uh, our annual <coughs> grant that we apply for on an annual basis that helps us with our health and wellness uh, initiatives and offerings in that regard. I uh, attended uh, the meeting in Gainesville uh, this past week. We were acknowledged for uh, some of our efforts in the area of our lunch and learns and our weekly yoga sessions. They acknowledged us. So uh, they even made reference to the possibility of increasing this amount for us. Uh, you know, should we become more creative in, uh, in the things that we do. So they did give me the first installment of uh, this uh, grant. It's a $3,000 check that I'll turn over to the finance department. Um, they want to make sure that we, uh, we address certain um, uh, aspects of the grant. And uh, that once we satisfy those things, then they'll give us the second part of it. So. Okay. Very good. Any questions from the Pretty self-explanatory. Okay, we'll move on to tab number 12, authorization to approve an MOU for 10-8 forensic services for drug screening for the Douglas County State and Superior Court Accountability Courts and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. This is Anita Granger. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you. This is really just a, a combi uh, combined effort between Mr. Pruitt and myself to try to um, be more cost effective in using 10-8 um, forensics for our screening. Um, they will come in and collect the urine samples. I have already have an MOU with 10-8, um, and Mr. Pruitt was using another company, so we have decided that um, we're going to merge to, to maybe make it more cost effective. Well, it will make it more cost effective. Um, I've already taken that into consideration in my current um, submittal of my budget for this year, so don't cut me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, but that, that's all it is, is just a, a combining of um, resources. Okay. <coughs> thank you, Ms. Granger. Okay, thank you. I'll 13. leave the copies with Ms. Watson. Okay, thank you. Tab number 13, authorization to approve a five-year Dale Master Lease Agreement for Office Computers Refresh for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Major Holmes. Good morning, Good morning. Madam Good morning. Chair. Um, this is a, a budgeted item for 2019 for us. Um, it is... Uh, what this one particularly involved, because I got this one and the next one. The Dale Master lease is for all the computer equipment relating to the Sheriff's Office facility. It's a refresh for everything that we have. We have been trying. Also, I have Rod Ross, our IT director, with me here today in case there's any specific questions. But we've been trying to do some refreshing on our system, and we, we came to this point about doing a five-year lease. It's actually easier to do it in the budgetary than having to come together once every six or seven years with a large amount of money. I just want to give you a real brief idea. We are in a situation uh, with this where we have actually had starting having hardware start failing for us. So it's a desperate issue. So this is just, uh, my understanding it's been approved. It's been through all the vetting and all that. And it's just a matter of before y'all signature for this one. Okay. All right. Any questions for the board? I believe that would mark as it comes through for all of us to sign off on it with the queue up for I think I saw it in the system. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I have to check to see where it's at. But. Okay. It's in, it's in the process, and this is one that was approved for the 2019 budget. So <coughs> yes. Decided. And then also tab number 14, authorization to approve a four-year SunTrust master lease agreement for patrol cars equipment refresh and authorize the children to sign all related documents pending legal review. Uh, Mr. Holmes, again. Same, same thing here. This is the one that's, this handles all of our sheriff's office mobile computers, which is the vehicles, as y'all would know. Um, and this one's for four years, same thing, to do a total refresh in our system, because we have been having problems <coughs> also. Um, okay. Rob? Um, Rob. Rod? Rod Ross is here okay. also for that one, too. If you could come up, Rod, please. Rod. Come on, Rod. Come on to the podium. Yes, right, just if you could just talk about your computer, I mean, if, if it's not some confidential information about a computer. How long has it been since we've upgraded that? I know we've been on William of Prayer, and we're so glad that we were able to get this done last year. In computer terms, we're ancient right now. Okay, um, okay. Some of our, our data center equipment that's running our servers and stuff came over from the old jail, if that's any indication uh, we're hurting there. The patrol car equipment was refreshed right before we moved into the old jail, so it's running on eight years now. So mm -hmm. our public safety is running on eight-year-old computers. Okay. So I know you're really excited about this new upgrade. And yes, ma'am. We, 
Okay. We, we can't wait. <laughs> I believe Commissioner Guy has a question for you, Laura. Yes, uh, I believe, and I was confirmed with uh, Commissioner Mitchell, that here in the courthouse we re we refresh every three years. Is mm -hmm. that not? So, uh, is it five? Five. five? Okay. I was thinking three. I think he, it's five. he thought it was three to five or so. Okay, uh, but um, is that fast <coughs> enough every five years? Because technology is changing so fast. Now. Yes, ma'am. We're doing five years in all the office, uh, all the sheriff's office facility and the database or uh, the data center, and we're doing four years on the patrol cars because we do want to keep newer, better equipment in the patrol cars as we can. Now you have a mainframe of your own yes, and everything. So where do you stand on that? Because that is included in this refresh. This is part of the refresh. Mm -hmm. Is this just software refresh or no? This hardware? is hardware, uh, hardware and software essentially. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
on to tab number 15, uh, authorization for the fire department to purchase ballistic equipment for the protection of fire and EMS personnel in hostile environment incidents to be funded by the 2016 SWAST funds from the, uh, from the cities not to exceed the amount of $27,000. Yes, ma'am, uh, and I would also like to add, as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee, uh, we need to put that up on our uh, agenda. Th this is the uh, ballistic vest and helmets that we've been desperately trying to get for about the last year after we did our active shooter exercise last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we researched lots of uh, grant opportunities and were unsuccessful <coughs> on any of them, so... Uh, this is something we need to go ahead and fund. Uh, we talked to the county administrator, and he agrees we can get this out of the, uh, the city SPLOS money. So we're ready to move forward. Okay. Any questions? Commissioner Gagan. Is that the proper terminology? It's kind of sad. I know what we're trying to well, say. It's the money we were reimbursed from the cities of Villa and Douglas Hill as a result of SDS. It just sounds strange. Uh, 2016 splash funds from the cities. Uh, is there a better way of wording that? <laughs> the uh, city first portion? Re reimbursements. Splash reimbursements from the cities instead of splash funds from the cities. If we could put cities reimbursement, mm -hmm. I think that would be sure. it's a mm -hmm. more appropriate. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> All right, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Spencer, sounds good. We've been waiting. I know every time you see me, I'm bugging you about those best. It's very important that we have uh, some type of shooting that you need um, helmets and your chest covered. Um, next, we'll move on to tab number 16, authorization to accept $5,000 in donations from the Douglas County Humane Society for medical supplies and equipment and amend the animal services budget. Francis McMillan, Director McMillan. The Humane Society has raised and donated $5,000 to be used towards medical supplies and equipment. This allows us to do in-house testing uh, to help us in our goals of keeping our animals uh, moving throughout the system as fast as we can, and therefore it reduces overall uh, cost. Okay. Any questions from the board? Very good. Thank you so much, Dr. Okay, we'll go to tab number 17. Uh, this is our director, Mr. Holly. Is authorization to approve an agreement between Georgia Technology Authority and Douglas County EMA to allow Douglas County EMA to be on the public safety first net system by um, system being implemented by AT and T and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents directly. Yes, this is basically an um, agreement between du uh, Douglas County EMA and the Technology Authority, and I guess as a third party AT and T because they're the vendor that was chosen nationally for the first net system. We want to test that, um, what, what the idea behind the first net system is to move public safety to one um, general um, contract where they have preemptive service and during disasters and unusual occurrences and everything. But before we move everything, I think the sheriff's office right now is using it for the mobile data terminals and, um, and the city's using it for the testing out. So we're, just, we're trying to fill the work. Before we move everybody over in public safety to the, um, th this system, we want to kind of vet it. And I'm kind of a one, one man show on that stuff so I can play with it and I'm in different areas of the county on the, so before we move everybody over so I'm just going to kind of be the guinea pig with it and come back and recommend to the sheriff's office and fire department whether I think it's a viable solution for us or we need to stay with what we have for other public safety agencies. Okay. Any questions from the board? Thank you. All right, we'll move on to tab number 18, authorization to advertise for an RFP for website, uh, website design. Director Martin, good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, this is just result uh, from a recent programming committee meeting uh, where we're seeking authorization to advertise for an RFP for our website design. Any questions from the board? Vice Chairman Robinson. Why are you doing an RFP versus an RFQ? It's a website. I'm just curious. It's professional services to a certain extent. I'm just explaining me why the when I think about RFP, it's, it's the formality of it. And again, whatever the committee is saying, I'm, 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 I'm weighing in that the RFQ allows you to evaluate the firm based on a value proposition versus the RFP, which is more of uh, a... Uh, yeah, yeah, well, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah finished product uh, per se, um, or price. But but specifically, like we put out a, a seventy-eight page RFP for the program management for the swaps, and I was like, absolutely not. That would wait. It was overkill. So um, I mean, it's just a website overhaul. Right? We spent four <coughs> million on program oversight. And that was an RFQ. <coughs> so I'm looking for the justification of why. Our, you know, evaluate the firm and pick the value versus price. Because really, at the end of the day, it's a commodity, right? It's, it's a website. It, it's nothing unique about that other than you will have your own look and feel, your own identity, your own thumbprint. But I'm just, and it's okay if you want to go to price, uh, I, I think, or RFP with the proposal, um, or you do the RFQ and then you go in and negotiate like you guys always do so well. But I'm, I'm just, you know, are you constraining yourselves? Because uh, uh, everything is not just about price. Right, website, yeah, and, and the coding. I mean, again, y'all are technologists, I'm not. But like, people work around price, especially with technology. It, it really should be the value exchange um, in that selection. I, I just was curious. I you? So we can do it either way. Both With both of them, you look at their credentials and their qualifications. Right. We can definitely change it to an RFQ. The reason we put on <coughs> it is because we had 125,000 budget. Just what he says. Commissioner yeah. McCarthy um, has it. So, so the, the uh, process will be an RFQ because we already have one in the purchasing department to use, and it is an RFQ. So, to your point, it is an RFQ. We won't be doing an RFP. And uh, so, that was just probably a, a typo, but it is an RFQ. And we already have that on site, and that should be going out. And uh, purchasing director uh, Bill Peacock did specify the it would not be a problem since we already have one on, on file. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner uh, Mitchell, do you have anything to add? Oh, no, 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 that, that, that's what I... He's the chairman of this committee. So. Yes. Okay. No, okay. Right, yeah, just to, to, to yeah. that point, I, I'm glad, Commissioner Mitchell, I see you. I hear you. All right, so, so to that point, remember, the Transportation Committee, uh, we used an RFQ uh, for the landing page or for, for association with Connect Douglas, right? So this is where my... He had a precedent. I was just curious as to why y'all going so hard on this. But it was more to give y'all power, as long as you know we had set a precedent. But it's it really your call. Um, but I, I didn't want y'all to be over restricted. But it sounds like what I'm hearing is that this is going to be changed. Correct? Mm -hmm. RQ versus RP. Correct. Yes. Right. Yep. Correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for recommending that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, my All pleasure, right. Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving on to tab number 19, authorization to advertise for a public hearing to consider amendments to Article 2, Purchasing, Section 9-25, Purchasing <coughs> Procedures, and 9-34, <coughs> County Preference of the Douglas County Code of Ordinances. Um, Don Evers, I don't understand you. Uh, Director Peacock. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Currently, Section 9-25, Purchasing Procedures of the Code of Ordinance, sub Subsection D, reads, Requisitions of $2,500 or less shall be reviewed and approved or denied solely by the purchasing agent. Requisitions over $2,500 up to $10,000 shall be approved or denied either by a member of the Board of Commissioners or the County Manager slash Administrator. Requisition of $10,000 up to $25,000 shall be approved or denied by either a majority of the Commissioners or the County Manager slash Administrator and one or more of the Commissioners except as otherwise required for road construction, requisitions over $25,000 up to $50,000 shall be approved or denied by a majority of the commissioners and the county manager slash administrator. Requisitions over $50,000 shall follow the bid procedure established in section 9-28, except as provided in subsection E hereof. Requisitions for professional services rendered to the county by attorneys at law, <coughs> engineers, accountants, medical doctors, insurance agents, and other such professional personnel shall be approved or denied by a majority of the commissioners. The amendment to this subsection as recommended by the Purchasing Oversight Committee will read, requisitions of $10,000 or less shall be reviewed and approved or denied solely by the purchasing agent. Requisitions over $10,000 up to $25,000 shall be approved or denied either by a member of the Board of Commissioners or the County Manager slash Administrator. Except as otherwise required for road construction, requisitions over $25,000 up to $50,000 
shall be approved or denied by either a majority of the commissioners or the county manager slash administrator and one or more of the commissioners. Requisitions over $50,000 shall follow the bid procedure established in section 9-28, except as provided in subsection E hereof. Requisitions for professional services rendered to the county by attorneys at law, engineers, accountants, medical doctors, insurance agency, and other such professional personnel shall be approved or denied by majority of the commissioners. In the code, section 9-34 for county preference currently reads, except for construction projects subject to state law, the county may allow local companies to be within a 3% cost difference with, when evaluating competitive bids and make an award to local foreign firms. The amendment to this section, as recommended by the Purchasing Oversight Committee, will read, except for construction projects subject to state law, the county may allow local companies to be within a 5% cost difference when evaluating competitive bids and making an award to local firms. Okay. Any questions? Thank you so much. Okay. I had to think about what I just heard. That was a lot. Um, in, in, in a good way. Um, all right. So, so again, this is about internal controls. Um, and, and so it's just an update to our policy. And so I, I want to maybe net net what we just heard um, for the moment clarity. It says that the shift. Um, County administrator, this is the kind of, I want the county administrator to address this one. So we, and this is dealing with, um, um, we went from 20, what, 10,000 to 25,000? Mm -hmm. um, yes. just, just stay there on that part, right? We went from 10 to 25, 10 to 25 to what, 25 to 50? Explain what we just, that, that part right there. Well, there's, the, the chain, we went from all of them. So the purchasing director was previously up to 2,500, right. and we're taking that to 10,000. 10, 10, All right, stay there. That's the first one. The county administrator before was 2,500 to 10,000, so we're proposing for it to be, and recommended by the uh, Purchase and Oversight Committee, go from 2,500 to 10,000 to 10,000 to 25,000. Right, so you're so 10 to 25. Up, that gap bumped up, right. and then the uh, county administrator and or I think three commissioners or three commissioners or county administrator and one commissioner, which is mostly the chairman because the chair is here full time, um, would be from, it goes from 10 to 25,000 and the recommended change is 25,000 to 50. Once you hit the 50 mark, then we have to go out for bid. Mm -hmm. Board commissioner, right? Yes, sir. Um, I, I just think that we say a board of commission. We say board of commissioners, and while we, there are, I think there's a, a distinguishing difference with the chair. I just didn't hear the chair. It was real subtle. It's like okay, well, because we're not here day to day, and so you you shifted from. It sounds like it shifted from the county administrator to the board of commissioners, versus to the chair. And if you're saying that the chair is implied within the board of commissioners, that's fine. I just want to make sure we're all clear on what was just written. It's how it's said. It, it, not, it was intended any other way, it's just what I heard. So I'm not suggesting anything. I just want to make sure that it, all hearts and minds are clear uh, uh, because it, sometimes acknowledgement is important, right? And, and shifting this is a very subtle that the Board of Commissioners, yes, while the chair is implying that, has a day-to-day, to, -day, to your point, a day-to-day -day executive role that is distinct from us as district. And so. Uh, it's real subtle. It's just how that word is struck me. I'm not going anywhere with it. That was the first one. And the second one, I'm going to move on from that. that it was just one of a, a point of reference. And the last thing on regarding this is um, in this shift, um, DBE, uh, DBE, this? Mm -hmm. yes. disadvantage, dis, disadvantage business enterprises and, and some of the other SMEs and, and, and other acronyms that I learned with this process. Um, is that being addressed here? I no, sir, that's not addressed here. Okay. This is an authorization to controls. advertise for a public hearing, and then when we bring this to the next meeting, yes. um, we will have the DBE requirements. All right, so two okay. steps. So this is just internal controls. Yes. All right, that's fine, internal controls. And inherent in that professional <coughs> services, that's the other point. 
Um, you didn't use the word consultant. Uh, I don't want to go there before we sort of play, play games with the word consultant. I, I want that explicit in there. So where you got engineers and doctors and all that, I want the word consultant in there, please. That, that, that's important. Um, add that one part in there. Um, I, I think that there is um, times where the chief executive should be able to, to engage consultants. It was something I've always watched over these past 10 years. We would, sort of, we would play with this. We'd have to move behind. Like, it was like shadow games and stuff. It's like, why is it so hard? If it's in the budget, if you've got the authority, it falls within 2500 why are we going through all this trouble over consultants to get experts in here to do work? So I'd like that. Just, just make sure that's added. It's more of a, when I think, I'm sure you, you have the authority to actually do without a lot of drama. But why are we spending $5,000 on this? It's like, because it's in here that allows us to. Um, so I, I want to bring clarity to that because some of this is just, it was the old, I just, it's, it's better to err on the side of transparency than, than sort of what I say, shadow games of government. It's like, why are we going through this? If you need a lobbyist, get a lobbyist. I mean, don't, don't, don't play shadow games with the public and that how you're trying to get stuff done is that the high if you believe in it, stand for it. Uh, but, but, but keep it in the public. Uh, so I think sometimes we use, we use professional services in a very catch-all, just sort of like how you can work around the public conversation, which I, I always despise, but at that time I was not a majority. So uh, nevertheless, I appreciate the public hearing um, process with this and the public nature. How are you? Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Carter. Yes, uh, the part where the, um, the difference between the bids changing from three to five, what's the purpose of that? Well, the history of success on the 3% preference is not relevant as 3% is the minimum. So we figured that if we increase it to 5%, it may become more relevant as well. Well, if they're local um, contractors, they already get a plus 3% difference, right? That's what this, is that's what this is. is. This would change that. <laughs> this this is just for local? Yes. 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 Okay, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry, <laughs> you read a lot. <laughs> and uh, before the maximum that Administrator and the chairman could sign off on. I thought it was fifty thousand. It was twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then did we have a plateau of twenty of uh, fifty thousand or something? Yes, the twenty five to fifty was county administrator and three commissioners. Above fifty, we got to go to to a uh, to a bid bid process. Okay, and uh, the reason. Price of products are going up. You know, a couple <laughs> of different things. One, one was one to decrease. Them, yes, the proposed changes for this particular section um, will help approve the, the approval process by decreasing the number of outstanding purchase orders that the commissioners need to approve. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can't get us together. To <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, just have to, it's a thin line. We just have to be very careful with this because we don't want people to think we're mid -rigged. Purchasing Oversight Committee uh, took into account um, all of the uh, different types of levels that were brought to our attention. And since so I'm a commissioner, and every time I'm on the phone, Lisa or somebody's telling me, please go in and approve <laughs> a, you know, a, a, a requisition that's out there, um, we just looked at the, the levels that we had versus what other counties had. And most counties do give their county manager up to $25,000 to, because he already knows what's in their budget anyway. So we took all of that mm -hmm. into consideration so that we were just being consistent. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the reason for that. And for the 3 to 5% on local, 3% just really was not making a difference. For, uh, for our local people to really have a real <coughs> shot at getting these contracts, we needed to give them a little more cushion. And we want our local people, because they're, they're paying taxes here, we want them to stay here to do business. So that, that was the reason for that um, for that change. Um, but yes, yeah, so I just wanted to clarify. I just didn't know the word local. The local. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. But I think the um, Purchasing Oversight Committee um, is continuing to do some changes. And uh, so just be on the lookout for more to come. Um, but it's been a pleasure to work with Don and Bill and Mark in, uh, in this process. So I'm excited to see what the Purchasing Oversight Committee mm -hmm. has to offer next. Thank you.
Commissioner MacArthur is the chairman of the mm -hmm. Purchasing Oversight Committee. We appreciate you, this body of work that y'all are presenting to the board commissioners. And certainly I appreciate your vice chairman saying be uh, not so, I, I think it was a little vague at the beginning to say you should say chairman for the 50,000. But what I don't want to do is click it and somebody said you didn't have the authority. So thank you for reiterating that. And I need my, my, final, my team, my county administrator, my finance, I want y'all to stand up because what you're saying is, well, commissioners, they said just be direct. It's the chairman mm -hmm. that's going to sign off on these $50,000. Yeah. So I just want to make sure it's clear because you know I won't sign off and then I'll be towing back and forth. So thank you. So I think the reason it says commissioners, in case you're out or something, you know, you're out of pocket, then the vice then we're not stuck mm -hmm. behind the uh, mm -hmm. chair slash BOC, but just she still has independent authority. She's always going to hear it as one of the five, but you got to acknowledge her. When you talk about internal controls, which is executives, like I said, I may show up every now and then, but not, you trust us on this one. This one, I, you don't want to be there right here. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to specify chairman and then whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to the next um, item, which is tab number 20, authorization to accept a donation of approximately 256 256 acres, I almost said 256,000 acres. <laughs> 256 acres of land from Southeastern Trust for Parks and Land Incorporation um, located at Anna Wakey Road to be used as a future library site pursuant to a memorandum of, uh, of understanding updated, or should I say dated July 23rd, 2019, and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. The legal department. Um, I'll take care of this one, uh, Madam Chair. So. Okay. We had the environmental phase one performed and the site came back clean. So we've already discussed this in the executive session and we're ready to close. But in order to do that, we need to approve. Okay. So we're ready to close on the phone. All right. Any questions for the board? All right. Any other questions? Commissioner Carpenter. Yeah, no, yeah, she's going first. Yeah. Yeah. So the 256 acres of land um, that is being donated to us, how soon do you think we will be able to go to closing on that? We'll have to check with we'll have to check the our Chicago attorney and just as quickly as he can do it. Okay. And the um, other question for that. So once we acquire this land, we do have the understanding that is ours to use as we want to, right? Yes, that will be included in, that's already included in the MOU. <coughs> so that's already been handled. And we'll make sure that that's carried over into the contract. All right. Mm -hmm. Question remarks. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> library? Yes. Library, it's, it's, all right, so I'm, I'm looking at library, I know Recently, and I, what's her name, Lindsay, Lindy, Lindy, Lindy Morris did a great presentation, um, I think last round recently. And so I acknowledge the multi-purpose, multi-use for this learning center. It's not just a traditional library of books and shelves and so forth, but it was something that we did talk about as a group, as the board commissioners, that if we commit to this application process with the state, uh, there's a high likelihood or a, a, some degree of probability, probably north of um, what I'm going to submit. 50% that perhaps we get this. And so then it comes back to our, our match. So they give us $2 million, um, I don't know what this would cost, $8 million, I'm guessing. All right, so Seven to $10 million, seven, 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 right. $10 million. Right, Thank you, Mark. I'll take that. All right, $10 million. All right, one more time. All right, long term capital plan. It's nice we got all these things that we want to go do. You cannot do them in pockets. There has to be somebody who is integrating this whole picture to say, okay, now. And I get it because there's no guarantee. So I get that you gotta at least go for it, right? Because again, it's, it's, there's always comp competition, there's always other things, right? So there's no absolute, so I get it. So this is not to err on the side of, um, of, of nervousness. Uh, but, but with that, there has to be just as much, it, it ain't like luck I'm gonna just throw it out there. Okay, now you grab, you catch that well, you gotta really bring that thing in. So my, my point being is that, okay, 10 million here, 20 million here, cars 20 million for the sheriff. Uh, economic development, like you guys mentioned earlier, it, like, okay, y'all adding this up, right? And how you gonna frame this? And, and it's one of those where what you, we, we don't want to be is we we've grown to this point, and I think we're willing to do the right thing. But it's like, okay, now you, you like with this floss, we didn't bond everything, so we have capacity there. We have very small um, long-term debt, 
right? But it requires a commitment. What we don't want to do is be out here, now we've set these things in motion, and then our credibility crumbles, right? So our, right now, we're up. Douglas County is progressing. It's, it's doing all the right things. You're doing a great job. You're paying the bills. You're doing all those things that are got us to this point. But, but what we don't want to do is get out here, and we're setting things in motion, and we can't fulfill it. Because now, our credibility is that we're not ready. We get thrown back to the bottom of the list, and it's like, so the point is, let's be ready. Um, and that was the whole point of um, um, the, the capital transportation, which is just be ready, right? And so there's a, okay, you gotta line this up. It's like, okay, if this thing hits, what is the commitment for each one of these? And that's why I go back to the, making sure y'all got a single, da a single view or a dashboard of this financing. <coughs> This says, okay, I got y'all got the annual budget. Y'all got that on lock. I'm not concerned about that. I'm looking at this thing because we've never managed to this degree before. So all this is rhetoric until you do it. Because again, the history is like, we've only reacted. So it's not, a, it is what it is. So there's no indictment of the current administration. It's like, well, we just reacted. My point is like, oh my God, this thing about to hit. Are y'all paying attention? I'm good. It's just, all right, it's gonna be 50 million, 60 million. Right? Everybody's got to see themselves in this to make a vote. Right? And, and so, uh, again, I appreciate the maturity of the conversation. Um, either we, we, we make a decision independently, we go in debt without a vote, or you put it on a referendum. It, these are not you know, cloak and dagger. These are options that are public. Like, okay, quit running from this. Not, not even by it, but I'm just saying. You can't run from it. I'm talking rhetorically. Don't run from tough decisions. We know the citizens are putting pressure to say, well, what about us? And, okay, now they want us to catch up speed. It's like, okay, to go faster, it's going to cost more. It's going to cost more. Or like, well, now, Chair, you can spread this out over 40 years and half million per year. You can do it that way, right? We can save $100,000 or a million dollars per year for the next 30 years. Y'all, good luck. <laughs> but but I, I, my point is, let's just be honest about it and do the best we can with what we got. Um, I, I think uh, the public is willing to work with us, per se, um, and accomplishing uh, priorities in which we all, five of us, can weigh in on. I think it's important. But, but knowing what, what you don't want to do is make those promises. They said they come up with these pretty pictures, and you, you're, you're just wagging in front of the people, and you're just incending them while you're still spending day to day. You're still taking care of the thousand people day to day. But yet the public, like, well, what are we getting out of you taxing us? I, 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 are, are my roads being paid? Are, are my parks being cleaned up? Are, I mean, what am I getting? But yet, you, you guys, again, one more time, the thousand people are getting their pensions taken care of. They, they're all comfortable, but what about us 100,000 people that are out here? That's the balance that I try to bring. What about the commercial who's paying taxes too? Like, okay, I mean, I can vote, but I put up commercial. I put up 40% of that. Like, I want my stuff taken care of too, right? So it's, it's something to think about. It's a good problem to have um, and as, a, as a group, guys. You know this is a good problem to have. Before, we didn't really have this option. It's whatever what came along, but now, we're a little bit more in a different place, and I look forward to the, the full form of debate, Madam Chair, during the the, uh, the budgeting process of whatever the administration comes for. Okay, I just wanted to say to the chair that I believe uh, and I'll keep serving to speak on uh, behalf of Commissioner Carpenter, but I believe she's just simply casting casting the vision. Uh, certainly, I want this administration to think big, and we should. Uh, you've already applied for a grant that's out there potentially for $2 million that hopefully will come, but it, I understand that's a three-year process. Again, we don't want to, I, I don't want us to think uh, like we did many years ago that you can certainly put a splash on the, on the uh, referendum and then it passed one time and you go 10 years without another. That's just not the new uh, way to do things. Most counties, uh, they buy into sophistication of splash and that's just important. That's the only way we're going to be able to get there is we can continue. So as I've mentioned on numerous occasions, occasions we need to prepare for another squash going into the 2023 or whatever year. And I'm hoping the citizens will hear the cry. I think they're excited about all the things that are coming down the pike and it's gonna require some help to get there. So I'm just hoping that we will align with other counties in the state of Georgia and, and, and endorse a squash just going forward, just give it just rolling squash forever to, 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 be, to do what we need to do in this time. So, Anyway, we'll move on to the next item, and the next item is, is tab number 21, authorization to approve the amended purchasing card and credit card policy uh, purchasing card and our credit card user agreement and the Douglas County Travel Policy and Procedures Manual. Uh, legal? Um, I'll have, handle this one as well, Madam Chair. Um, so you had asked uh, County Attorney to 
review the uh, credit card policy and the credit card user agreement. Um, so the changes resulting from that. So as far as under unauthorized purchases, um, so we added our county attorney added the following. So county purchasing cards and credit cards shall not be used for the purchase of items of personal use. Um, you know, essentially, the first part of the, every, every one of these are the same. So, but I'm just going to list the uh, the products or the uses. So, uh, personal use, refunds or advances, um, any items specifically restricted by this policy unless an exemption is made by the board of commissioners. Um, alcohol, no alcohol or alcohol related products, no tobacco or tobacco related products. No electronic cigarettes or electronic cigarette related products or other similar items. And, and the following items were already included. Uh, county purchasing cards and credit cards shall not be used to avoid compliance with the county's purchasing policies and procedures to purchase goods and services that are not approved in the county budget, to purchase good, goods and services exceeding the per transaction or per, per month limit. Uh, purchases not in compliance with the county purchasing card and credit card user agreement and anything that's in violation of Georgia law. So this is, there's some other uh, housekeeping items that are associated as far as definitions. Um, so employees were changed to county representatives, things of that nature, but most of those are just housekeeping. And then the purchasing user agreement was changed to reflect what's in the policy. Um, and then, I think that, that essentially just meant what was in the purchasing policy. And then also is the travel policy uh, procedures. Let me get to that, I that on the page. Um, Travel policy and procedures manual. Um, this was a two-fold process. You had the county attorney working on certain sections and then uh, staff worked on other sections that we brought through to the uh, finance committee and had a recommendation uh, to move forward there. Um, so essentially the guidelines for authorization, administration, and travel expenses reporting by county employees. County employees is recommended to be changed to Douglas County's elected officials, employees, members of advisory boards, and all other who are authorized to travel on county business and seek reimbursement from the funds of Douglas County. Um, and there's a couple of housekeeping items. County representatives is now would replace employees. And so the first major change would be the per diems. So the current per diems are $8 for breakfast, $10 for lunch, $16 for dinner. These are allowed per diem reimbursements if uh, breakfast, lunch, and or dinner is not provided at the conference or the training or the classes. Um, so the recommended changes to those are $15 for breakfast, $15 for lunch, and $25 for dinner for a total of $55 a day if nothing's included in your in your training. Um, some more housekeeping items. And then, so there were sections for, if you used a personal vehicle and a county vehicle was available, you only got half mileage. Um, you don't really have enough county vehicles to go around. So if a lot of people went on one trip, there were some, um, if the county vehicle was not available and you were in your personal vehicle, then you got full mileage. So it was recommended by the finance committee to change all of these to full mileage where you, if you did not drive a county vehicle, whether you chose to of your own accord or whether one was not available. So full mileage instead of half mileage for those cases. And then the rest are the next 
next major change would be so as far as non-allowable expenses for travel and training would be in addition to items that were already included in here uh, expenses of family members uh, alcohol or alcohol related products tobacco or tobacco related products <coughs> electronic cigarettes or electronic cigarette related products or other similar items and items not compliance with this policy. And essentially, I think that's it besides the, the housekeeping office. Okay, any questions from the board? Yeah, th thank you, Madam Chair. Just something we talked about last time. Uh, we just sort of, uh, we, we all sort of acknowledge it, we'll make sure we clarify. Um, you know, over the past, again, 10 years, I've watched uh, and, and again, while we were in a different place as it relates to training and so forth, um, remember the administration took back training and kept it concentrated and we were going through that recession, but now there's sort of a, 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 a revisitation of certain things that really, it, it wasn't necessary at the time. So I appreciate the willingness of the administration to take this up, uh, to clarify. I think that the $8 for a, a breakfast is something like, come on guys, I mean, put us a 50 cent for coffee. And it's something that just you, you have to bring bring things up to terms. Now, let's not. There is a financial impact to this, but it's the cost of life. Things inflate, right? So I, I think I, what I don't like to do is not to hide. Like, no, be honest with the public. There is like, okay, what we just said was that things are going to be a little bit more expensive, but they're, they're behind. You know, at some point, you know, you have to bring things up to, to par. It's like, okay, we gave you a raise ten years ago. You should be. You know, no. Keep it, keep it up. Don't, don't, don't do that. Because at some point you're going to have to catch up, and now you got this big giant spike. It's what we call the balloon in, in the finance industry. You know, okay, you can keep it down at that interest only, and at some point that thing's going to pop on you. But if you actually manage this and amortize it over time, if you just acknowledge the fact of keeping up with the cost, I mean, just like the, the standard of living, of, you know, um, associated with the feds is what 1.5%, 1.72. Whatever the number is we use as, as sort of a marker, it's acknowledged. The cost of inflation, it's acknowledged. The standard of living, it's acknowledged. And so I, I think what we're trying to do, and, and I'm sure this was good, Mark, you guys did a great job. House clean, closing certain loopholes that were inconsistent between the different policies and stuff. So I know it was three or four policies coming in together, but y'all guys did a good job of getting your minds around it and bringing it to the forefront, not only on the behavioral part, but the financial part. Are you Thank you. And also, uh, Mark, if you could just mention what, stand, uh, what I guess, industry or standard we use to change the, you know, to make those recommendations about the, the different cost oh, of do you? Yeah. yeah, I think it was it the, do we use the, <coughs> uh, the, 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 federal, the federal government is what they provide for their employees in terms of the travel, both breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yep. And then also um, that you're just, you're just for profit and non for profit profit organizations, and I was just telling my, my experience, it was $25 for breakfast, $25 for lunch, and $25 for dinner, which is $75, which we're keeping ours, ours at 55 which is we just align with the federal. That's just our recommendation. Because uh, when our staff go to places like Arizona and California and have breakfast for $8, that's not going to do anything again, like because their coffee is for $50, uh, $5, $8 is just not enough. And I've had several complain, civil uh, employees complain, and just talk about that insufficient money for their breakfast or lunch. And I said, we'll, we'll see what we can do to bring it to the board of commissioners. Any other questions? All right, well, we have one last item, which is tab two. Okay, I'm sorry. <coughs> Number 22, authorization to approve the Douglas County Board of Appointment Policy. Uh, our clerk, Lisa Watson. This just um, pretty much puts in line our process for making board appointments mm -hmm. in that community. And I believe Commissioner Mitchell requested that. Mm -hmm. So we have had it. Commissioner Mitchell, okay. All right. So um, we'll, we'll, we will approve accordingly tomorrow. Um, 23, authorization to renew the agreement with the Civic Clerk uh, for the automated agenda system for an annual cost of $11,000. $984 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Clerk Watson. Yes, ma'am. This is just renewing the agreement we have now with Civic Clerk on our automated agenda system as well as the voting 
um, the price did increase a little, um, but there we've never had a price increase other than when we've added um, different functions. And um, so this will, and we've had this system since like 2012. Mm -hmm. um, and they're continually um, providing enhancements to that system. They have virtual virtual training, videos, and webinars that they continuously provide. Lisa did the addition of the, um, I guess, the automated voting. That put a little pressure on the two, right? Because we vote now electronically. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Just Got one it. question. Do they do the minutes also? Mm -hmm. um, I just have a little problem that it takes so long for them to get the minutes out. Well, yeah. they don't particularly do the minutes. I do those minutes and I put them on the website. But it, even after you upload them, doesn't it take a long time? I, I often look for some minutes and could not <coughs> find it. You're thinking of the code. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. It's just the minute when you see it. Well, this has a way in the system to provide a way to do the minutes. They electronically do the minutes for you, but it's still me that has to um, upload the minutes to Unicode. So it's Unicode that causes the delay. Well, <coughs> Sometimes it was my fault, <laughs> but it's, mm -hmm. it's caught up now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Roxanne? Yeah. I, all right. So this is just the, the base foundation that you've always had since mm -hmm. you, you've been here. So I, I get that. And to Madam Chair's point, we, we bring up the voting part. Um, so for, for my question was going, is, okay, it's going up in cost. Can we get a report on our, our voting, how we voted? Like, I mean, where are we at with reporting? Because, you know, we talked about this, and I understood where we were. I can no print, pressure. Yeah. I can print reports um, by particular meetings, yep. or I can print reports by commissioner. Right. So if I want to see all no votes that I've done since whenever, mm -hmm. since you've been at this, can I do that easily without hard coding? I don't want to go through a lot of trouble, but I mean, the, the point of this was to get information, right? So, right. Um, can that be done? Yes, it can. Fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I know you had requested to add like a category in right. there. Right. We are hard. still working on that. Yeah. As of now, they can't structure the reporting to sort by um, back at, by a category by a category other than what I just named. But yep. they are working to enhance that. No, that's fine. I mean, just something fundamental, right? I mean, you want to see, okay, so. How well am I doing? How do I think? What, what is my lean? What is all those things being accountable to yourself, but also to the public and how you render decisions over the past year? So, thank you. I got it. Okay. All right, board commissioners. Any other comments before I um, ask the okay. executive session? Ask the secret. Um, Attorney Thompson, do we need to go into the executive session? Yes, Madam Chair. For the purposes of discussing personnel and legal matters. Okay. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So we'll do that. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate that raise your right hand. Okay, we have a final unanimous vote. The motion carries. Please take 10 minutes and your lunch is to be served. Thank you. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we had an extremely productive meeting today, so tomorrow we will Thank you. Um, um, prepare for our work, uh, Board of Commissioners meeting tomorrow. So. Look forward to our meeting. If there are no other questions or comments at this time. This meeting is adjourned.